Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. And we are back. What's up, everybody? This is Latif, and welcome to Good Night Freestyle. We are on episode 10. So we've done 10 days in a row. We have 353 more days to go for the first year. (laughs) So, um, no, I'm not counting the days. I'm actually enjoying this. Um... I've just made, never made a daily commitment like this. I've done a lot of writing and I've done a lot of uh, videos <clears throat> uh, and things like that. Um, this was a quite, and usually I don't commit publicly. Uh, a lot of you guys don't even know I wrote books until I showed you them. And so I, I promoted them. I started promoting them. I think Yes, Yes, Y'all might have been the first time that I did anything with any kind of pre-order. And I did that because I learned that for self-publishing, that that's the way to go. Um, It's not really to help generate sales, but it kind of, it gets a a good chunk of readers together. So that way, when the books do come out, you immediately get reviews. They'll read them. They'll be the first to read them. And a lot of times you encourage them, ask for reviews. And the reviews are put back on Amazon and that helps to continue uh, pushing the book, you know? Listen, to get rich on books uh, really takes a lot of work and it takes years and years. And um, so a lot of people that get into writing books, that's not, that that shouldn't really be, the, really be the goal. If it happens, beautiful, but it can be discouraging if that's what you're going after. So uh, if you're writing, I think um, you should really enjoy it. You enjoy it. Listen, I don't claim to be um, a great writer, but I do enjoy it. I, I enjoy it, you know, I mean, probably uh, more than a lot of things. You know, just the fact that I can come into my office. I like to, a lot of times I'm, uh, I like to write uh, early in the morning, but come into my office uh, early in the morning, cup of coffee, I pretty much know where I left off the night before, and I pretty much pick up from that point on and just type away. And um, I had mentioned this before. I'm what they call a pantser. That's a term that writers use. It means that I write from the seat of my pants. <laughs> so I don't plan. I don't outline. Um, I have a, a, a little idea that's in my head, but it's not on paper. I've tried the outlining um, to... Um, I don't know, too limiting, too uh, constrictive or restrictive, I guess. So I like to just come in, know where I want the book to be at the end. And um, and just every day, you know, just I, I kind of, just like if you would read them, you would read the book, the way you would discover new things happening is the way I write it. I discover new new things that happen. Some things don't always work out. Uh, sometimes I can really write off the wall and I have to go back in and kind of trim it down, you know? So um, it's just my technique on how I wrote. And uh, But uh, but I I enjoy it. I enjoy it. So, you know, spe- you know speaking of writing, let me, let me just throw something at you guys. Um, I do write a lot with freestyle, either as a theme or somewhere in the background, okay? So, for instance, Freestyle for Life was my first novel, okay? Now, I didn't plan that. I did not plan that book. Um, The way that turned out, actually, the way that um, I ended up writing Freestyle for Life was I was sitting down with Angel, and she was telling me a bunch of stories about, you know, her growing up, and 
I was pretty fascinated by the stories. <laughs> now I have a ton of stories too, and I, I'm always telling stories. I used to tell stories all the time. I always wrote, wrote songs. I always wrote these little stories when I was growing up, wrote a lot of poems, stuff like that. Always pretty creative. Um, used to draw a lot. But anyway, so I'm sitting there and I'm listening to her stories. So she tells me, yeah, I always want to, you know, put these in, the, you know, write these. Uh, yeah, I always want to write a book and, you know, put these stories in. I thought that would be great. I mean, we had a bunch of ideas. And um, as a surprise, I ended up buying her a book called How to Write a Novel. And it wasn't a fat book. It was a, it was a small book. And she reads all the time. So she had a bunch of books ahead. Like, she'll go to the library, no joke, and pull out, you know, five or six thick-ass books. I'm talking about 500-page books. And I remember I used to tell her, why are you going to pull out so many books? I mean, you're not going to be able to read that. And then I learned later on, she actually, she reads them. I read a lot. I always have a book, but um, I don't, I can't sit there in one sitting and knock out 10 chapters. I can't do it. So it takes me a while to read because I read in between things that I'm, I'm, that I'm doing. A lot of times I like to read before I go to sleep because it helps me, helps me, um, helps me knock out, you know, uh, I'll read a couple of, a couple of paragraphs and my eyes want to close. So anyway, so I bought her this book called How to Write a Novel. I think it was How to Write, Write a Novel in 30 Days. I don't remember. So I gave it to her. She put it in her pile of books. She was going to get to it eventually. Um, and I think about a week went by. And every time I came into the room, I would see that book there. And every time I saw the book, it was it was so strange, man. It was the weirdest thing. It was almost like the book was meant for me to read. I know it sounds weird, but I, I, I don't know if you guys ever bought something and you just keep looking at it, like just bought a new car and you can't get your eyes off it, or maybe, you know, you bought a piece of equipment, a camera, whatever the case may be, and then next thing you know, you, 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 you just can't, you know, you're always looking at it. It's just kind of, that's how this shit was with the book. It's, I know it sounds strange, but I kept on looking at this book. And then finally one day, when I read, if I lay down reading, I lay on my belly. <laughs> I look like a big kid, legs up, <laughs> laying on my belly. Um, <laughs> so one night, I came in and I just grabbed the book. And I laid down. I think Angel was watching TV or something. I don't remember. And <clears throat> I started to read the book. I, of course, read the back cover, the inside covers. And then I... I got into the book. Um, I started reading and I basically read three quarters of it that night. I went to sleep. I woke up early in the morning and I ended up um, writing the rest. Uh, I reading the rest in the morning. So, <clears throat> so I ended up reading the rest in the morning. Uh, and when I finished the book, I had so many different ideas in my head that I got on my computer and I just wanted to put the ideas down. I really had no intentions of writing yet, but I started spilling these ideas on my computer and I couldn't stop. I mean, I was writing, I was, I was writing mostly narrative. It wasn't any dialogue uh, yet. I was just writing, you know, this story, this idea that I had. And the next thing you know, I'm in maybe 25 pages and I'm looking at this story and I'm basically wrote the whole story like as a narrative all the way to the end, you know? And I didn't tell Angel what I was doing because I'm always doing something new. <laughs> and I didn't know if I was gonna stick with it, but I ended up starting all over again with the idea, I didn't go off the idea that I had just written. I just, I, it, it was in, it was instilled in my, in my head at this point. And I remember starting the book and that was it. I just continued to write and I must have wrote continually. I mean, like the entire day, I would, from the morning, I, from the minute I would wake up in the morning to like late at night. All, is all I did. Like, I didn't even want to answer phones. I was answering, I remember answering phones, getting shows in, 
and telling people, I'll call you back and not calling them back because I got so into what I was writing. Then I got to the realization that, hey, I got to (laughs) work. I can't can't send shows. I can't send these uh, these, uh, promoters away. So I started just focusing on writing the book in the mornings for, I got up real early. So before the phones even rang, which was until a lot, we're in the music business, so phones usually don't ring till almost one o'clock. So I was able to write from about 5 a.m. to about noon. Then at noon, I would go eat something and then I would get to work. And I was covering a lot of ground. I mean, I was writing quite a bit. And by this time, I already told Angel what I was doing. I had never wrote a book before, so she was like, okay, you know, in her mind, you know, it was cute, another project he's gonna do, okay. Um, and I started bringing in, I would print, I would do maybe a couple of chapters, I would print them out, and I would bring, give them to her, and she would sit down and read everything I gave her, like in one sitting, and when I would go, and then I would go in there, and usually I would give it to her, she would read, then she would maybe make lunch or whatever she's doing, and I would go back into the house, sit down and eat, and talk to her about what she just read. And she gave me so much encouragement, like, you know, and it's your wife, just like if it's your mother. You don't know, are they telling you because they love you, or are they being real? And this, I was new to this, so I wasn't, wasn't sure what it was. She was always encouraging she always pushed me to do whatever it was I wanted to do um but this one was a little different now I knew the stories were dope I I, I, I knew what I was writing and but I can tell then I started you know as I continued to bring her more and more chapters I could tell that she was really getting into it because she wasn't just telling me what I was writing she was telling me about the characters, what these characters, who they were, like she understood them, which meant that I was writing very clear because that's the thing. You don't want people to, to guess your characters, what's their, what's in their mind, you know, and that's, this is the beauty about writing. This is what I love about it. It's not about just writing, uh, so Johnny runs across the street and tackles the guy. It's not really just like the action and you're writing what you see. But I like to write thoughts. You know? And when you're writing thoughts, you know, you're writing it in um, in first person. So now I become Johnny. And instead of Johnny running across the street to tackle the guy, Johnny's now contemplating in his head what he's about to do. And when you're able to get into someone's head, it becomes even more scary because when we think, a lot of times we could think of the extreme. You can think, you know, if you're going to step to somebody in your mind, you might envision the absolute worst. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to step to him. I step to him. This is what I'm going to do. He's not looking at me punch him in his face where he gets on the floor. I'm going to put my knee on his throat and I'm just going to bash his face in. This is what you think. However, when you finally do step to him, it's just basically a boxing match. It doesn't turn out that way, but your mind was vicious. So I'm able to write this viciousness and kind of put the readers in this really, really unique place within the story where they're like oh my god like this dude has the capability of doing this is he gonna do that now I didn't think about this when I was writing I was still new I I didn't really I read one freaking book and then I started to write it took me about about a year to to write the entire freestyle for life about a year after I wrote it, I printed out all the pages, got a red pen, Angel started first, gave me some notes, some edits. It's really um, proofreading. 
I'm not really big on anyone messing with my grammar, even if it's not correct, or my slang, or the rhythm of my writing. I don't like that. Um, I had this one guy that I paid him $900. I found this guy online, did a little research, and he was um, an editor. And I paid him $900 to edit my book. It took him about a week. Then finally, he sent the book back. And <clears throat> when he said, well, no, he didn't send the book back. Yeah, he, he um, it was a file. So he sent me a PDF. I printed two copies of the PDF. I gave Angel a copy and I took a copy. She went into her room. She read. I stayed in the office and I read my copy. Now, when I read it, I wasn't feeling it. It was almost like he sucked all the juice out of my story. It, it lost its soul. It's like it lost its essence. It's, it just wasn't, it just wasn't, it just wasn't there. It was like, so, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to portray that of my thoughts to Angel. So I went in, I went into, um, into the room when she was done. And I went in almost with a positive look. Hold up, I'm drinking my tea. Um, hate tea. Anyway, so I went in there with a positive outlook because I didn't want to even, I didn't want her to get any kind of indication that I wasn't feeling this. Like I had to have the most serious poker face because I didn't want to persuade her in any way. I needed to know the truth. Not that I didn't trust that she wouldn't give me the truth. I just had to be convinced with this. And when I went in there, she looked at me as though she didn't want to disappoint me. But then she told me, she says, I'm not feeling this book. And though my heart dropped because I'm like, oh, at the same time, I was relieved because I knew she was telling me the truth. So then we sat down, we talked about it. And she told me, she says, it seems like the guy who was editing, edited it to more so not to capture my character. He wasn't trying to capture me as, as the author. He was just trying to impress me. He was trying to make it stand out like he would underline stuff and then make the correction so i would see okay well that's the correct way of saying that but still doesn't flow you know that my my characters aren't perfect like that my characters talk in broken english and they 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 make mistakes and they they don't pronounce things right and you know what i'm saying or, or they don't use um certain things in in context in the you know um, but I was relieved. So I still have that copy. It's so crazy because I wrote in big marker. I sealed it with tape and in a big, and I put it in an envelope and with a big marker. I said, I wrote exactly what it was, was edited version. No, not good. Do not use really big. Took the files that he sent me and deleted those. The hard copy I kept but I stored it away. <clears throat> I sat down with the original copy and I did my own proofing. And I really just focused this time on typos. And you could probably read the book now, find a typo here and there. And, um, and every once in a while, I'll go in and revise it and kind of re-upload it. And, um, you know, I guess so if I'm doing some new prints, whatever the case may be, try to do another edition and try to correct it. Um, I'll still find some more typos, but... It was a toss up with me. Um, I can either get an editor who's gonna, you know, make it perfect, but it's gonna suck the soul, or let it have a few flaws, but let it really have what I, what I intended it to have. So anyway, after all this work, I ended up putting this, the 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 manuscript up on the shelf, because what you need to do is after you write and you spend so much time, you gotta put it up for a little while. 
after you do the editing, because you know you, you 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 know where the book is, so you have to know. Then you have to put it away. And sometimes, you know, people put it up away for a year, six months. So my intention was to only put it away for a few weeks. Because what it is, is when you take it back out, you're supposed to re-approach the book as if you're reading it for the first time. And it, and it actually works. And you're able to see mistakes a, a bit more clear. See, when you write something and you just wrote it, you actually, your mind memorizes some of the lines. So you can have words literally missing from a sentence and you'll never catch them. Because since you just wrote the, the lines, your mind actually remembers them. So even if it's a word like but or duh, you're gonna, those words, you're not gonna, and you can read it a bunch of times and you will not catch those words. The way I have to catch those words is I have to hold a pen to each word and kind of just go from word to word and really focus on the words to make sure I'm not missing any words, okay? But when I give it time, so when I give it, you know, a few weeks, I put it away and I sit back down with it, I catch most of them, okay? And then, of course, Angel goes in, she catches a bunch as well, um, and we keep on, you know, and every once in a while, I'll catch another one, I'll fix it, and so on. But anyway, so the intentions was to put the book away for a few weeks, but the few weeks turned into a little over a year. And I kind of, at that point, I kind of forgot about the book. I didn't forget about it, but it was almost like I satisfied myself by writing it. Like, in my mind, I accomplished my goal. My goal was to write a book, and I, read a, and I wrote a book. But I hadn't yet published it yet. And I think at this point, what it was, more so, was I was really concerned about what other people will say, you know, and see, that's a big problem. I mean, that's a big problem with a lot of us, you know, sometimes we don't, we miss out in life because we're so concerned with judgment, we're so concerned with what other people will think or what they will say, and I'm super guilty of that, and that's oh, that's been my challenge for the last several years, you know. But anyway, so one day in a conversation, Angel started talking about the book. And she says, you put in all this time in this book. Where, where's the book? I said, well, you know, I put away. I'm like, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of doing something else. She was like, wait, 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 hold up. What do you mean something else? I said, yeah, I had an idea. And she goes, but you got to put that one. I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know if that's the the one to do. We already had the title. It was called Freestyle for Life. She says, are you kidding me? She goes, you got to put that book out. And, you know, it turned into a little, little argument. However, I knew she was right. I was arguing just to save face, but I knew she was right. And the next day I got up and I started to, I, I, I learned how to format for Kindle. I took an online course for that. Now you can find a lot of that stuff for free, um, or you can get someone to do it for you. Um, but I formatted it for Kindle, and I said, well, let, let's see how it does with the Kindle. And it took me a couple weeks. It was really confusing. Kindle's a pain to do. Uh, you have to do it right, it, it, or not your, your, it won't lay out right, you know? There's no page numbers. You gotta go by uh, word count. So anyway, I uploaded it to Kindle. I had um, P. Hernandez, a good friend of mine who passed away recently. Uh, rest in peace, P. He also did the cover for my second novel, Freestyle. So shout out to, uh, to P. Really missing him. Talented, talented brother. But anyway, um, so <clears throat> I actually drew the entire cover. I have that artwork where I, and that's how I would do it, P. As I would draw it on a piece of paper and with a pen or pencil, and I would just scan it and send it to him, or take a picture and send it to him. And then he would take my idea and he would turn it into, you know, bring it to life. And that's how we always did it. <clears throat> and I love doing it like that because I feel like I was involved in the cover. I created that cover. They just made it look good. So, but, so I ended up putting it out on Kindle and I started to promote it. And I'll tell you, I was really, really surprised 
of the response that I got from that book. Really. I think right now we have something um, like 80 positive reviews on that book. We sold several thousand. I Several, several thousand. And I remember right before Christmas, all right? So now this is when things like the Kindle and the tablets were becoming popular, okay? I don't know. Was that 2011? I don't remember. Um, but I remember it was the Christmas. It was the Christmas that all those digital tablets became popular. So I created ads on social media that basically I was telling people, don't just give away a Kindle, give away a Kindle with the book on it. Don't just give away a a tablet, give it away with the book. And I remember waking up in the morning and I had dropped the price was cheap. I think the the book was only like $2.99. I didn't want to sell it for a lot because I, I didn't know. I just wanted I just wanted people to read the book. I wasn't I wasn't too concerned about the money. I wanted to establish myself as an author and I wanted to get it in as to as many people, as many readers as I possibly can. And the only way I could do that was to put it as cheap as possible. You know, I think at one point I even put it down to like 99 cents. Um, but I think $2.99 was my my bottom line. And I remember Christmas morning, getting up, and I had something like 500 sales, okay? And I didn't pay it much mind. I really, really thought that I wasn't reading it right. I wasn't reading the specs. So I remember going back in, we had people coming over. I went in, because I got up real early. And I went in, went in the house, started getting ready, took a shower, got dressed. Before people came over, I came back in, and I was up at like 1,500 by now. I'm like, what the hell? What the hell? So I'm still, I didn't even tell Angel anything because I'm thinking that I'm reading something wrong. There's no way in the world that I'm selling those that number of books so quickly. No way. So I went back in and it was almost like a drug because when people came over, I would sit there and we would talk and I'm entertaining and we're having a good time. But every once in a while, I would sneak away to check the specs. The next thing you know, I was up at 25, 35. I think the last time I checked, by the end of the night, I think we were at something like, oh my God, like 6,200 copies sold in one day. And I hit number three on the Amazon top sellers list, number three. Um, And I remember telling Angel, and we just, we bugged out. I couldn't believe it. And it, it was an incredible, incredible experience. I have not experienced that again. <laughs> but there was a lot of things that were lined up. It was a new format. It was the highlight of everyone buying Kindles and buying tablets. And uh, people were going on there and just finding books that were really cheap, you know. And um, so I got lucky. But it was a great way to break it out. At that point, I knew that uh, a paperback was a must. And I always, like, to me, I'm old school. You're probably old school too. I love paperbacks. Hold on, guys. Okay. I love paperbacks. So, to me, I didn't feel complete. I didn't feel like an author until I was able to hold my book. So, I started doing some research And what was popular at that point was the vanity presses. These were companies that you pay and um, you pay and um, they'll print your book. You own all the rights. It was a cool deal, but they gave me a deal better than normal because of the sales that I got. So I paid, I don't even think I paid a hundred bucks. I forgot, I think I I paid processing and they paid, they took care of the rest and I think they sent me something like 100 books for myself or 50 books for myself. I forgot how many. Um, and the books started moving. And they had like their own, uh, the company had their own um, like, um, you know, bestseller list. And I was like at the top for like my whole time that I was there. So anyway, 
the book did really well. And uh, after that, I, I decided to do freestyle. That will be a whole other story. <laughs> and uh, I just want to kind of, you know, I just want to bring this out of pretty much how I transitioned into writing. <clears throat> and um, just so you know, I've created, you know, I wrote also Freestyle, which was another novel. After that, I did another book called Freestyle Promotions and the Seven Simple Steps. And currently, I have um, in pre sale mode uh, being released March 27th is Yes, Yes, Yo. And that's actually two, three books. Uh, three separate books, okay, and that's going to be also on paperback. All my books are available on paperback, and you can find them on Amazon. I'm not trying to sell you guys. This is not a pitch. Don't feel compelled. The books are going to be there for as long as I want them to be there. Um, but this is, I just want to show that experience and, um, and, and how I'm tying this in with the genre is I found another opportunity within freestyle and I decided to write something specifically for our audience because not everybody knows about freestyle so I didn't write this to be this you know this great you know book where everyone wants to read it most people if they don't know anything about the genre they won't understand it and it probably won't even attract them. And I've had people, even the, even I've had the, the publisher who asked me, you know, why don't you write something a little more general instead of doing free stuff for life? Why don't you do something like about music in general and you can grab more people? But that wasn't interesting to me. It wasn't, it, it, I wasn't interested. Um, I wanted to write something specifically for the freestyle genre. And I did. And because of that, I was the first urban Latino novel based on the freestyle music genre ever written. And um, I will always be proud of that. And But I do encourage others to try to hand, not just in writing, um, there's so many other opportunities. Just You just got to look at it and use like hip hop as an example, see some of the things that they do. And see if there's a there's a niche in there somewhere for you. I'm sure there is. You know, find out something that you love. Find out a passion that you have. And see how you can cross them. Because we have a built-in audience. So, but anyway, I want to share that with you guys. I, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, you know, these are just some of the things that, you know, I'm thinking about constantly. And, uh... And they mean a lot to me. And I, I kind of hope, you know, it, it, they touch you in some way and that you kind of understand where I'm going with this. And um, and uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. So until tomorrow, enjoy your evening. Be safe. God bless. And good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.